E for eugenics, pseudoscience about race. Selective breeding of humans can make the world a purer place. When saying, that's scary, those words are ne'er truer than of the main man today, Otmar von Verschur. I'm Indy Nidell, and this is the World Dictionary, today featuring Otmar Freiherr von Verschur. I'm going to go out on a limb and start off the day by proposing that if it's World War II and you're Joseph Mengele's boss, you're probably kind of a dick. But let me backtrack. German biologist and geneticist von Verschur was born into a family that was originally Dutch. It was also noble, and young Otmar was a baron, Freiherr, from birth. Now that birth was in 1896, the year of the first modern Olympics. And the year radioactivity was discovered. Utah became a state. The first automobile accident occurred. Yep, Henry Wells hit a cyclist in New York. True story. And let's see. Oh, yes, the Supreme Court affirmed the legitimacy of separate but equal racial separation in Plessy v. Ferguson. And the golden age of segregation could begin. Back to Fairshore. He served with the German army in the First World War, rising to Leutnant. And he began to study medicine in 1919. He received a doctorate in 1923 and a habilitation which I had to look up in 1927. It is the qualification to conduct self-contained university teaching and is the highest qualification issued in many European higher education systems. The things you learn. That same year, Fairshuer became the head of the human genetics department at the newly founded Kaiser Wilhelm Institute of Anthropology, Human Heredity, and eugenics in Berlin. This institute was and would continue to be heavily funded by the Rockefeller Foundation. Why, you ask, would an American philanthropic foundation fund this particular institute? Well, eugenics was a pretty hot topic at the time, and American scientists had been digging into heredity research for years. Thing is, I have to be clear here. Eugenics is not really the study of genes. It's a belief system, kind of a religion that you can improve humans by selective breeding. It was already well clear at this time that it was not science. Now, genetic research, which is science, has led to all sorts of benefits for mankind over the years, but that was not eugenics. And there was a real dark side to what eugenics proposed. Theories of racial superiority were quite common at the time. And the Institute, during the whole Nazi era, was associated with the racial hygiene and Nazi eugenics theories advocated by Institute leaders Fritz Lenz and Eugen Fischer. In the States, there was also stuff like that going on. In fact, in the first half of the 20th century, 60,000 people were sterilized in the United States, many without knowing what was being done to them. But today, our focus is on Germany and Fairshuer, who just happened to be heavily funded for many years by Rockefeller. Fairshuer was a religious man, and in 1935 joined the Confessing Church, which arose in response to the Nazi drive to create an official state church. He did, though, join the Nazi party in 1940. Now, I'll talk more about World War II in a minute, though I will throw out the bizarre side note that during the war, he was accepted as a member of the American Eugenics Society. All right, man. Uh, he was not tried for any war crimes after the war, and in 1951 became professor of genetics at the University of Munster. Like many of the former Aryan purity geneticists of the Nazi period, as well as some of his American colleagues, Fairshuer successfully recast himself as a genetics researcher post-war and avoided association with eugenics and with the Nazis. In fact, in his denazification hearing by the Allies, he was marked as a Nazi fellow traveler, which meant he didn't support the regime, but didn't oppose it. He was fined 600 marks. In the 1950s and 60s, up to his death in 1969, in an automobile accident, 73 years after the first one ever, Fairshuer launched and led research projects on the effects of nuclear radiation on people. Then an accidental overdose of gamma radiation alters his body chemistry. And now when David Banner grows angry or outraged, a startling metamorphosis occurs. Yes, Otmar von Fairshuer was trying to find a cure for the Hulk. Okay, not that, but he did become involved with ethical questions and, and argued that genetics should be based on human dignity. He also warned against scientists trying to genetically engineer improved human beings. Gentlemen, we can rebuild him. We have the technology. We have the capability to make the world's first bionic man. Yes, Otmar von Verschuer was very much against creating the six million dollar man. Okay, all kidding aside, Let's look at the serious stuff for a minute, because so far, he doesn't seem like too much of a dick other than 
circumstance, you know, like, like happening to have a genetic institute in Germany in the Nazi era and during the war. That doesn't automatically make you a dick. But Fershua wasn't just an innocent bystander. He wrote in De Erbatzt, a genetics journal that he himself edited, that Germany's war would yield a total solution to the Jewish problem. He was a strong advocate of compulsory sterilization programs and from 1935 to 1942 was the director of the Institute for Genetic Biology and racial hygiene. He was the director of Kaiser Wilhelm for the last three years of the war though, and his former student became a longtime assistant of his. That man was Joseph Mengele. When Mengele arrived in Auschwitz in 1943, Fershuer notified the German Research Society that Mengele was joining him in their branch of research as captain and camp physician at Auschwitz. Fershuer wrote, Anthropological testing of the most diverse racial groups in this concentration camp is being carried out. Well, yeah, it was. See, Fershuer was a leading scientist in twins research, and the war had made it difficult to find twin materials, his words, to study. And Mengele's new position was going to be a big help with that. Soon, Mengele began sending research material to Fershuer for study. Let's see. There was the internal organs of dead children skeletons of murdered Jews, the whole bodies of murdered Romani, and of course, blood samples of twins that had been intentionally infected with typhus. Lots of stuff like that. Mengele would keep his eyes peeled for twins arriving at Auschwitz and perform horrific experiments on them, sending the reports back to Fershuer for evaluation. Eyes, skulls, and other body parts were often also sent for evaluation as well. As journalist Edwin Black wrote of Fershuer and Mengele's justification for their work, with twins, you could unlock the mysteries of defective reproduction. And also, with twins, you could discover the secret to multiplication of the master race. When the war ended, the Institute's lab materials and its thousands of files were hidden or destroyed and were never obtained by the Allies to use as evidence in war trials. But if you want to know what the Germans thought of Fershuer, in 1946, he wanted to rebuild the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute in Frankfurt, and the commission to make the decision, which rejected it, said that Fershuer should be considered not as a collaborator, but one of the most dangerous Nazi activists of the Third Reich. That is what the Germans thought of him. So yeah, he was probably a real dick. But let's see how he stacks up on our actual scale. In terms of achievements, um, he was a pioneer in genetics, and genetics has done much to help modern life in terms of cures for diseases and even modified foods that we eat today. As a negative, a lot of people aren't really sold on the modified foods bit. Uh, he was a pioneer in the study of inherited diseases. He was a pioneer in twin methodology. He did excellent research on the effects of radiation upon humans. He did a lot of bad stuff too. Uh, he advocated the forced sterilization of huge numbers of people. He was involved in the actual sterilization. For example, in 1937, he and his colleagues analyzed 600 children descended from French African soldiers who had settled in Germany after World War I. The children were sterilized after analysis. He directly and indirectly used research materials obtained by his assistant Joseph Mengele at Auschwitz concentration camp. He was fully cognizant of Mengele's work. He was complicit in horrible experiments involving thousands of people, mostly children, and mostly who died after unimaginable torture. So his general evil is hardly mitigated by his achievements, and just for the scale of his badness, we'll give him a three out of three. In terms of being a dick, though, he espoused a racist pseudoscience that had already been discredited in his time. Uh, he worked actively to advance the theories of racial hygiene. He directly collaborated with Mengele by using the results of his experiments. That is pretty much a three out of three on the dick scale. And remember, this was mass dickishness to humanity. That gives him, that gives him a maximum three overall score. That is the maximum on the overall scale, which means he makes it as a first class dick. That's it for today. If you know of any dicks throughout history that we should talk about, let us know who they are in the comments and tell us why. Remember, living people do not count. Don't forget to subscribe to never miss a single letter of the alphabet and hey, don't be a dick.